Hello, dear listeners. Hannah McCarthy here. Nick Capodice here. Today we are bringing you our latest installment of Civics Shorts. A bite-sized refresher on the United States Census. It's created with middle schoolers in mind. But anyone with an appetite for learning and pie should enjoy. Official scorekeeper of American development for 150 years has been the busy but unspectacular United States Census. What? Who let this guy in here? The census is spectacular. One, two, three. Ah, the census, my favorite time of the decade. Ah, ah, ah. I'm Jackie. I'm Christina. Today on Civic Shorts, we're going to talk about the census. 1440, 1441, 1442, 1443, 1444, 1445, The census is so much more than just a headcount of every single person living in the United States and territories. It has a direct impact on all our lives. A lot is at stake. We're going to give you the what, the who, and the why of the U.S. census. Buckle up, buttercups. Thousands of operators will sort and tabulate the millions of cards, almost entirely with machines. Mechanical marvels of accuracy and speed. First off, what is the U.S. Census? Why do we have it? Article 1, Section 2 of the United States Constitution says, The government government has to count count everyone everyone in the country country every every 10 10 years. years. We count each person in all the homes, in all the neighborhoods across the country. Boomers, Gen Z, babies, everyone counts. Of course, everyone in your home counts. Other information is collected. Like your name, age, race, gender, if you rent or own a home, your marital status, and and more. more. Since 1907, the census has been completed by the Census Bureau. The Census Bureau is part of the U.S. Department of Commerce. The census has presented a steadily broadening picture of the nation in its 10-year inventory. Congress has repeatedly extended the scope of census questions to meet the growing complexity of American life. Throughout history, the U.S. Census has reflected the values of our society. For example, Noah, Jacob, Mason, William. In the beginning, only the names of the heads of each household were surveyed. In other words, mostly the men. Ask the supplementary questions only for the member of the household whose name is on the marked line. Every so often, a widow or a single mom could get her name in there. Mildred, spelled M-I-L-D-R-E-D. But it was rare. Women, children, and extended families in the home were recorded as numbers. Now, what are the names of the other persons living here with you, Mrs. McGee? Well, there's me. The modern census now counts every single human in the country as their own individual person and records their name. So why do we have a census in the first place? Federal Federal funding funding and and representation. representation. I like to think of the census as a way to divvy up two pies. Two delicious, hot, fresh out of the oven pies. Two pies. I just can't stop myself from making pies. Okay, so let's pretend you're throwing a party. A pie party. All the food is pie. Ooh, my favorite kind of party. Now this is a half a recipe of pot frise. You're going to need about a half a cup of sugar. When you're baking, you need to know how many people will be at the party. You also want to know how big a slice to serve each person. Everyone should get their fair share. The population of the United States is continually changing in number, location, and composition. So, the census figures out who lives where and how big a slice of pie they should get. The first pie, I'm going to call this the blueberry pie, is political representation. There are 435 seats in the House of Representatives. These get distributed to the 50 states by population, and an accurate census response helps your state get the right amount of seats. States with smaller populations get at least one, while states with larger populations might get more. The second pie, we're going to call it the strawberry rhubarb pie. It's the federal money pie. 
It's chock full of more than $675 billion. Counting everyone in your home helps support your neighborhood for the next 10 years by funding things like schools, hospitals, and buses. So count yourself and everyone in your home. So the census is used to decide how the $675 billion should be divided among communities in the U.S. and territories. Mmm, pie. To enumerate and record the required information about every man, woman, and child in the United States is an enormous task. Who are census workers? When the census first started in 1790, U.S. Marshals rode on horseback to every house and recorded, surveyed, the menfolk. Is there anyone else who isn't here at the present time? Well, there's me. Now census workers include people like data entry nerds, statisticians, and census takers. People who go out into the field, house to house. It sounds like a fun gig. Some census takers have reported wild things out in the field. Chased by a baby lion. <laughs> census form eating goats. Caught in the middle of a manhunt for an escaped prisoner and escorted by a bloodhound. Come out with your hands up, or the dog will bite you. <laughs> Make sure you get counted for the 2020 census. It's easy. In 10 minutes, you can complete the census by calling or going online, or return your form by mail. Ah, ah, ah! So, in a pie shell, what is the U.S. Census? The census counts everyone who lives in the United States. Why a census? Because the data collected determine the number of seats each state has in the U.S. House of Representatives, and it is used to distribute billions in federal funds to local communities. Who conducts the census? The census is conducted by the Census Bureau, which is part of the U.S. Department of Commerce. I think you got it. This episode was produced by Jackie Fulton, with help by Nick Capodice, Hannah McCarthy, and Christina Phillips. Erica Janik is executive producer of Lemon Meringue Pies. Maureen McMurray bakes her classic apple pie without actual apples. Music in this episode by Blue Dot Session.